Hello and welcome back everyone to the front end developer roadmap. This is a video that I wanted to do since a long time because it helps two kinds of people. Number one, people who have no idea about what front end is, about what programming is even, and have never even coded in their whole life and want to start coding, want to be in the tech world, want to get a good job in a tech field. This video is catered to them. Or maybe you're working in the back end. Maybe you are great with Java or Python, and now you just want to explore the front end side so that you can call yourself the full stack developer. And a lot of time when we talk about front end, we think about websites made with Wix or you know just drag and drop things or WordPress websites, websites that come out of the box ready for us. People don't really know what's the difference between those websites that they can just make in a few clicks and the websites that you have to start from scratch. And as you can see on the screen, there's so many topics to be learned. I'll hide myself for a second and you just have a look. We have JavaScript, which, are, which is at the center of the all. And then we have Angular, React, Vue, Split, right? And then from CSS, we have CSS frameworks, Tailwind, Bootstrap, and we have libraries. We have thousands of libraries to explore and it obviously gets a lot overwhelming, right? It's not easy to just go ahead and start and become a developer today. So I just wanted to break it down on how you can do these things, how you can learn these things, right? And I'll also show you a few places where you can learn them from, not only from our YouTube channel, but from all over the world. Because obviously if you want to be a developer and learn a lot of things, we will try to tell you the best resources. But before we tell you them, I want you to first understand what the hell these things are, right? So let's start with the most basic concept that we can explore, which is front-end basics, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. A lot of people just say, hey, you need to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but let's first of all check on what these concepts really mean. So with HTML, you will be able to build a skeleton of a website. For example, the one you see on the screen right now. Here you have a first name, last name, country, and the submit button, and you have a few text fields, a drop down, and a button in the end, right? This is what you can make with HTML. Now you don't really see any website that look to be frank, this ugly, but this is a fundamental start. We want to understand the difference between CSS and HTML. CSS will not help you build forms. It will not help you build text boxes or headings or anything like that, but it will help you make things beautiful. So if I go to the next slide, here we have the same form. There's no difference in the HTML code, but there's a huge difference in the look and appeal of the form because now we have added CSS. So think of CSS as beautifying your work, right? It's called cascading like styling sheets. You don't really need to understand the full form. It doesn't really help anyone. But CSS is so powerful because it can make your website from ugly to beautiful. It can make things more responsive. It can help users stay on your website because they have a good user experience, right? So these things are important. Now, if you want to learn more about CSS, the best resource online for free is Kevin Powell. We even had the liberty to bring him on as a guest on our YouTube channel and we did a one hour podcast. So go ahead and have a look at that. And once you're done with that, don't forget to check out his channel and learn from him. And a side note, he's called the CSS King. Moving forward, we have JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is such a huge and vast topic. You can build anything with JavaScript. And by anything, I really mean anything. So let's see what you can make with JavaScript. You can do machine learning with JavaScript. You can build websites. You can build mobile applications on both iOS and Android. We can even do games on PC and mobile with JavaScript. And to be honest, a little bit of JavaScript is really present in every big company and every project that I've seen, if not 100% is on JavaScript. Right, And the best part is you can even do backend with JavaScript, which we'll cover in another video. But for now, let's focus on front end. Now, you might be thinking that if JavaScript is such a vast and wide topic, I will need to spend a whole year to learn JavaScript. Well, not really. You can spend six to 10 hours of your time and learn the basics of JavaScript and then move on because once you start building a real project, you will anyways see so many things that you still don't know, still don't understand, and you will need to learn them. But six to 10 hours will give you a fundamental understanding of JavaScript so that you can go ahead and start building your projects. Remember, in programming, you never really learn it all. It's not like other subjects or other fields. Even when I teach web development at Concordia, a lot of people 
are stuck because they think they have to learn each and everything there is about HTML, then each and every CSS tag and so on and so forth with JavaScript as well. But that's not really the case. They just need to understand the few basics, the few building blocks of each of these languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And once you are done with the basics, just go ahead and start building projects. You can even copy other projects. For example, if you see a YouTube video of someone building, let's say a calculator, just do what they're doing. Do Just copy them line by line and then try to understand what you just did and then try to add some features on it, right? This is how a real project works in real life. When you go to join a company, they will already have a lot of projects there. They will probably ask you to fix something or add something over it to make it better, to add some features. Or even if you're starting a project from scratch, once you're done with the copy pasting thing, then try to start a calculator or maybe a shopping cart website from scratch and see if you can do it. So with JavaScript, uh, we know that there are a lot of things to learn. For example, statements, comments, variables, strings, arrays, dates, booleans, loops, etc. And really, there's no point in me going through all of these. And even for you, you probably don't need to do that. So these are the two links we'll add in the description below. These are the two best free resources we found where you can learn JavaScript from, right? And this website is very interactive. For example, if you go to Hello World, you can even type Hello World and run the code yourself. So it's a very nice resource for beginners to learn about JavaScript. And I really think that if you spend six to 10 hours of hard work on JavaScript, you can understand the basics. Once you're done with that, we can talk about asynchronous JavaScript. Again, there are a lot of resources online that you can learn from, but let's first understand why we need asynchronous JavaScript and why I have written Fetch API over here. Well, Fetch is a library that you can use in JavaScript to get results from an API. For example, if we want to fetch the weather, so let's go to a weather API application. So as you can see, this is an API call. It really looks like a URL. And basically, if you pass the latitude and longitude, or even if you pass a city to this, instead of these brackets, if you write the city name, let's say Montreal or Delhi or New York, it will return you the weather of the city at that time. Isn't that awesome? Now, once you know how to get this weather, right, from this URL, which is called an API, how will you display that on your own website? For that, you need to understand how APIs work and how you can fetch the API result and show it on your own website. That is where the fetch API comes into the picture, right? So isn't that awesome? We are now linking each and everything together. We learned basics of JavaScript by the help of which we were able to display things after some time or based on some logic. So let's say if user sign in was successful, you're able to display with the help of JavaScript that, hey, your login was successful. Let's go to another page, which is the dashboard of your website. Right? And on the dashboard, you can just check user's location, go to this API, bring in the weather, and just display it. And if you're new to programming, these things might be sounding overwhelming to you, but don't worry. The only thing you have to do is practice. And that's true for anything in life that you might want to learn. right? And you have all the links. We will provide all these links in the description below. Most of them are free resources. Just go ahead and learn them one by one. In two to three months of your weekend, Time, you will be able to call yourself a front-end developer and also you'll be able to get jobs, apply for jobs, and then be in the tech field if you want to. The next and very important thing is NPM, which is called as a node package manager. Now on this concept, you don't really need to spend more than 30 minutes, but I still wanted to cover this because it is the world's largest software registry. It has more than 800,000 libraries. And if you don't know what a library is, well, think of it as a helper. I'll give you a basic example to bring it home. Let's say you have to create a website that will convert US dollars to Canadian dollars every single day. Now you have two options, two ways of doing that. Number one, you check the foreign exchange rate every single day with the help of API call. Remember API calls, you were able to use them to get a weather, right? The same way you can use the API call to get the foreign exchange rates. Now. Once you have the rate available, so let's say today US dollar to Canadian dollar is 1.3. You can now do the mathematical operation and show the result. This is neat. This is a pretty good code. You're able to see the real value of your currency based on US dollars in a couple of seconds. Now, this is way number one. Way number two is let's say your friend already has created this piece of software, piece of code, 
and he has uploaded it on npm so you can just say i want to do npm install and name of the library so in this case it can be npm install front of library let's just say right so now you can install that and you can ask front of library to do the conversion for you as simple as that so you don't need to fetch the api yourself you don't need to do the mathematical calculation yourself you can just use this library to make your life easier and do the operation that is basically the power of npm the power of libraries available for you and as you can see there are more than 800000 libraries they can be good or bad you just have to check on what the popularity of the library is how many projects are using it and then use it after reading their documentation and their features now that we know a little bit about libraries why not go ahead and start using css in a much better way which is using a css framework some people call them helpers but basically they are libraries that you can download from npm first of all we have bootstrap and second we have tailwind css both of these are super awesome css libraries and remember every time you have to create and as you can see here before we go ahead it says npm i bootstrap which is short for npm install bootstrap and here's the bootstrap version so as you can see npm is already coming in handy let's just check the documentation and see what you can do with this so rather than creating everything from scratch you can just use them you can just use things like bootstrap to create let's say you wanted to create an accordion which is basically multiple drop downs with some text so you can easily just copy this code and your accordion is ready you don't even need to use your brain you just need to copy and paste this in your website and then obviously change the content based on your website's requirements right you can download forms you can download let's say we have a drop down so rather than having the basic drop down that html provides us you can have a little advance a little beautiful drop down you can have drop down with links you can have colorful drop downs with separated links etc 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 and there's so many cool things that they provide that you would just be happy to use them it would save you a lot of time if you're not really designer friendly or if you're not really interested in building the css blocks of a website just use things like tailwind css or bootstrap and your life will be easier and you'll thank me later for example this is a carousel you can have multiple images here and just do a slide on them again really beautiful topics really advanced topics but once you start using them it will make your life so much easier you keep on thinking finally now that you have all the fundamentals ready it's time to pick a framework and now the time comes to fight if angular is better or react is better i'm just kidding really both these frameworks are awesome i have been using both these frameworks for about 4 years now and personal favorite i personally prefer angular not saying angular is better it's better for the personality i am right why i say it's better for people like me because i like structured things i like a single framework to provide me with all the powerful things i would need to build a website it can be less flexible less flexible than react but i personally just prefer angular because it has everything out of the box present for me react is more like an empty library in the beginning and you have to add things in it again both are awesome libraries angular is made by google react is made by facebook so obviously both these are serious projects a lot of websites are made with them and let me just show you a few websites made with angular and react so these are all the websites that are made with angular they are made by google made by microsoft and let's also check about the some of the few fortune 500 companies which are the biggest companies in the world so ts tcs jp morgan and chase right autodesk mcdonalds marshall honeywell all these companies ups you might have heard about a few of these companies and all of these companies are using angular to make their websites like at&t adobe the, the list is just unlimited and i think even udemy is made by angular so obviously angular is not a bad choice if those companies can build their projects and their complicated websites you can do that as well but react again is a very powerful library as you can see first of all facebook is made with react right facebook company made react library and they built the whole website based on it uber eats is made with react netflix airbnb and so on and so forth so many websites dropbox that you use in daily life are made with either angular or react so we can't really say that one is better than the other both are awesome libraries and if your focus is to get a job just go to linkedin put in your city and just right react let's say 500 jobs come in for react and then do the same thing for angular 
And now let's say 300 jobs come in for Angular. That means in your city, in your part of the world, React is more popular. So just go ahead and learn that. In the end, both are awesome libraries and there's so much to learn from both. And now the question comes, where can I learn things like Angular or React from? You can learn them from YouTube. There are numerous free resources. We have an Angular playlist for free on YouTube. You can just go ahead and check that out. We are building a project in which we can track crypto prices. So we are creating uh, asynchronous application with a lot of cool features. And I'm trying to break it down every single week when we go live. So just go ahead and check that. But if you prefer a really structured course, which you want to buy, well, you can buy some courses for about 15 to 20 dollars, which is basically price of lunch. And you can go ahead and learn from them. Kritika is right now working on a video that highlights five paid courses that we ourselves have bought and learned from. And she's working on that video. And I'll put the video link in the description below. If the video is already released, you can go ahead and check it out. And you can decide for yourself if you want to go the free route, which is awesome, or the paid route, which we took. And finally, you just have to keep on learning. Coding is a never ending process. It's always you keep on learning new things every single day. I have been coding for about eight years in my life and there's not a single day when I code, I don't learn something new. There's so much to learn. It can easily be overwhelming, but I have learned in these eight years that the more you learn, the better you become. You can't really think that now I know JavaScript, so I know everything in the world. It's not true. Even in a single language, even in a single framework, there are unlimited things to learn and don't get overwhelmed, just keep on learning day by day, keep on practicing, and you will be an awesome developer and you'll be happy with your life if you if that's what you want. Now, thank you for sticking till the end of the video. I hope you learned something new and see you next time. Bye-bye.